Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This video, we're gonna be talking about my go-to setups for springtime fishing. Right now, we're in the middle of May, and up north, we are in spawning season. We're right in the thick of it. Uh, but I wanted to make a video of both early spring, the middle of spring when you get into spawning season, and then also post-spawn lures that I use. But before we talk about the lures that I use throughout the spring, huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Crop the Monster. You can go to OTHfishing.com, use promo code DAVIS to get 20% off the entire website. Be sure to get some crappie lures. And don't forget, when you're on the website, be sure to use the same promo code to get 20% off a net. I know a lot of you are looking for a quality net, silicone netting so your hooks don't get stuck in it. This is the scoper version. It slides down to just under four feet and I can fit it right in my rod locker. Um, I have this in the boat at all times. So be sure to go to OTHfishing.com, use promo code DAVIS at checkout to get 20% off your entire order. All right, so to start it off with springtime, we're gonna talk about pre-spawn lures first. And pre-spawn lures are search baits. A lot of the lures I mentioned in pre-spawn, you're probably gonna be using in post-spawn as well. So let's just start it off with pre-spawn lures. Uh, but these are baits that I'm gonna be using when water temps reach 50 to 60 degrees. This time of year, this is what crappie do. On our natural lakes, they're gonna start staging up right on the edge of their spawning flats. So typically the north bays of our natural lakes warm up the fastest. And so a lot of times these crappie, what they'll do, they'll slide up from their wintering holes and they're gonna stage somewhere between you know, five to 12 foot range, maybe a little bit deeper. And uh, they're just waiting for the water to get to above 60 degrees before they push into spawn. And these lures are great search bait lures. That's what you're trying to do. Crappie typically are not stacked up on anything this time of year. They're kind of roaming around, they're chasing bait fish. And so that, that's what these lures are gonna mimic. So the first one is your classic beetle spin. Is this guy right here. This is a uh, 1 8 ounce nickel willow blade with a uh, 1 8 ounce uh, ACC crappie sticks jig. There's two plastics I really like using for the beetle spin. The, the one is the crappie monster mega grub. This is just a curly tail plastic. I mean, again, the old school curly tail and, and beetle spin is a great way to catch them. But anything to mimic a kicking of a bait fish. The other plastic I really like to use this is the Euro Tackle B Vibe, super sensitive tail. This is the boot tail, and it, again, you want to mimic the kicking in that bait fish. I would not recommend this type of plastic, which is the this is a uh, crappie monster small fry, but it's it's a super sensitive tail, but it doesn't have that side to side kicking action, which makes it a much better vertical jig or a bobber and jig setup approach. But I'll talk about that in a second. So for the beetle spin, again, it's just a micro spinner bait. You're casting out, letting it drop down. You're fishing multiple depths, five to 12 foot range uh, on our natural lakes. On our river systems, they're gonna push a bit shallower because you, they can find current. Current brings oxygen and food to them. And typic, in the wintertime, current brings warmer water. In the summertime, it brings cooler water because it's constantly moving. But you can find crappie a little bit shallower, pre-spawn mode on our rivers. I, I would say like four to eight foot range is probably where you can find a lot of crappie. You're looking for the water temps to be 50 to 60 degrees, kind of in that, that range. Um, the beetle spin is just a great bait. You can fish multiple depths with it. You can fish it super shallow. You can fish it all the way down to that 10, 12 foot range and it just mimics bait fish. The, uh, the next lure is no secret to bass fishermen in the springtime and that is the jerk bait. Now, Crappie, we definitely downsize with the jerkbait. This is a Eurotackle Z Spender. This is a two inch jerkbait. It dives roughly two foot. Um, you might be able to get it a little bit deeper, but the goal with this is to create a reaction strike, make it look like a struggling bait fish. And again, casting out, fan casting this over, the, over either fresh weed growth on our natural lakes. If you're fishing a river system, maybe you can find some docks uh, that crappie are kind of staging up near. Um, or any type of any type of sandbar point. This is a great little bait. If you're a bass fisherman, uh, you don't technically need a two inch jerk bait, but if you got like a three to four inch jerk bait, you might need to downsize the hooks a little bit. Uh, but anything that dives somewhere between two to five foot, great, great lure for crappie. The next lure, again, it's another bait fish pattern. This is a crank bait. This is actually a micro crank bait. This is a, a one and a half inch, actually it might be a two. Uh, this is the Z Cranker by Eurotackle. 
And if you, again, this is a bluegill pattern. Uh, this bluegill pattern works really well up north. This thing dives ar around two foot, and it, you're doing the same thing you're doing with the crankbait, casting it out, kind of pausing it over the top of the fresh weed growth on our natural lakes, uh, near the spawning flats on the river systems. You're gonna look for any piece of cover on top of the water. Now, for those of you that don't wanna go out and buy a micro crankbait, I'm sure you have something like this in your tackle box. A square bill is a two and a half inch square bill, uh, sexy shad pattern. Now, if you notice in this one, I keep, this is actually the bass fishing stuff that I have in, in the boat, big hooks. You can probably downsize the hooks to a one or two sizes smaller than this without affecting it too much as far as like its action. Uh, but these bigger hooks, I mean, unless you're down south fishing for some two pounders, uh, you might want to downsize just to help your hookup ratio on the crappie. And last but certainly not least, as we get closer to the spawn, these crappie, what they're going to do, they're kind of bouncing back and forth as weather patterns shift throughout the pre-spawn. Uh, once water temps hold consistently near that 60 degree mark, they're going to lock down on beds. You know, the, the males are going to go in, they're going to make the bed, and then the females are going to go in and do their thing. When that happens, a jig and bobber setup is a great way to catch them. Um, now with pre-spawn, this is a simple uh, pencil bobber, except it's got a three in one. I'll explain that here. With the bobber setup, you're gonna fish it much more aggressively. So what you're gonna try to do is cast out, you're gonna let the jig swing down, get set, and then you're gonna pop it about a foot and then let it get set again for a couple seconds and then pop it again. You're really gonna move that along basically any type of outside weed edge or the fresh growth weed edge is what you're looking for. Um, maybe around a dock, uh, any type of riprap on your river systems. You're using it more as a search bait technique than you are a throw it over, you know, a piece of, throw it near a log or a dock and just let it soak there. Okay, it's not a live minnow setup, it's just a jig and bobber. Now for this, I would recommend this style of bait. This is the Crappie Monster Small Fry. Because you're letting it kind of just sit there, this has a much more aggressive tail action um, if you're just kind of popping it back and forth. If you're really trying to move baits through the water column and make crappie chase, the curly tail or the boot tail plastics are the go-to for that. But if jig and bobber technique, I really re like the uh, basically the super sensitive small fry tail action. Now, for those of you down south that are probably into post-spawn mode, I would still use all of these, every single one of them. Um, some of you are just pure vertical jig. You know, that's all you use. You got a 10, 12 foot rod, and that's great too. If you're using a vertical jig technique, I would go with something like this. This is the Crappie Monster Small Fry again. Um, again, super sensitive tail. This is meant for more of a vertical approach, whereas the curly tail, which is the Mega Grub, or the boot tail right here, these are meant for casting and retrieving. The main difference between pre-spawn lures and post-spawn lures is you can upsize the bait. So if I was using a beetle spin like I got here, um, during pre-spawn I might go with a 1 16th ounce weight. During post-spawn I can probably run the 1 8th ounce or even a little bit bigger jig head, maybe a little bit bigger of a plastic. Um, also the crankbaits, the options you can use for crankbaits are amazing. For, you, for those of you bass fishermen that just have your basic square bills in kind of a shad pattern, those work great during post spawn as well. So those are the lures that I'm gonna be using throughout the springtime. Um, if you're past springtime already where you are because you're too far south and spawning's already over, don't worry, use this video for next year. Um, I love this time of year. It's a great way to catch a ton of fish. So get out there, try these tactics. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Be sure to check out Crappie Monster, OTHfishing.com. Use that promo code Davis for 20% off. Get loaded up on some crappie baits and be sure to get that net. We'll see you in the next one.